Uh, my name's Tim Sherrod. I'm from the National Library of Australia. Uh, during the day, I'm the manager of Trove. Uh, at night time, I'm a historian and a hacker who uh, loves nothing better than playing around with some lovely cultural heritage data. So it's my job today to introduce you to Trove uh, in a very whirlwind sort of way. And uh, yes, as the rather familiar tagline suggests, Trove is bigger on the inside. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to find something in here which you didn't actually expect to find. So what's Trove? Uh, perhaps the sort of easiest way to start to think about it is as a collection of collections. Trove actually harvests metadata from all sorts of other organisations. Hundreds of libraries, archives, museums, universities, government agencies, historical societies, all sorts of places. We harvest their metadata, we make it discoverable through Trove. Metadata. What about some real examples? Okay. Books. Perhaps no surprise that a service from a library actually provides information about books, but it does. But what's really interesting is it's not just the bibliographic data, but we also provide information on holdings, so holdings data. So if, like our robot friend there, you want to find out where you can actually get a book, where you can borrow it from, we provide information through Trove about that. What else? Millions of images and objects. Like I said, drawn from all sorts of different organisations, different cultural heritage organisations, uh, museums large and small, from the Museum of Victoria or the National Museum of Australia down to the uh, Bega Valley Historical Society, which currently contributes 47 records to Trove. But it's not just about uh, heritage materials, it's not just about the past, we also provide access to the latest research information. We harvest regularly all of the institutional repositories of Australian universities, so that includes the latest research publications, theses, anything else supporting research materials which th they make available through their institutional repositories are all accessible through Trove. One thing that we're quite excited about at the moment is some new data we've brought in, which is a whole lot of uh, details of programs from Radio National. So we're harvesting from their website, uh, and currently we've got more than 200,000 records from Radio National accessible through Trove, and that covers about 80 programs, past and present. And as my robot friend there is saying, uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is that that includes uh, all of basically just about every segment broadcast from the flagship current affairs programs, AM, PM and the World Today since 1999. So that's a really rich record of our recent uh, social and cultural history and a great thing to play with. And a lot more. Uh, Sorrow publications from the 40s onwards, theatrical performances from a project called Ostage. We just brought in some legal opinions uh, via the Attorney General's Department, legal opinions uh, which were produced between 1901 and 1945, again all discoverable through Trove, and we also have user-generated content. Users create lists which are collections of resources and you can access that information as well to see what our users are up to. Now, what we're talking about is mostly metadata, okay? It's the information about the resources. We don't actually hold the digital objects ourselves. We provide links through to those objects which are held on the contributors' websites. Mostly. There's one exception to that, and it's a very, very, very large exception, and that is we provide access to more than, uh, to the metadata and full text for more than 120 million newspaper articles from 1803 through to 1954 and a bit beyond. We actually have the Canberra Times going through to 1994. It's an incredible resource. It's an incredibly rich resource which gets a lot of use and uh, it's really profoundly changed the way that Australians are interacting with their past. And I, I mean it when I say that because I see the evidence of that every day. How do you get all that? All that material is available through our API. Um, how do you find out more? There's some lovely documentation there, which will go through all the technical details in terms of uh, constructing your queries, the facets and the indexes, which are available across all that data. Uh, other information about getting an API key, which is basically an automatic process, very easy to do. But if, like me, and you don't really want to read the documentation, uh, you can actually jump in and start playing with some data. I created a little experimental API console, which has some canned examples which you can click on and modify to see what sort of results you get back. So you can just dive in and start playing with some data and see what happens. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what people might do with our data and I'm always happy to talk metadata. Thank you very much.